Is Bangladesh turning into a one-party state? It's already turned into one. Um, We, as a nation, couldn't vote in 2014. Uh, It was a one-sided election, and 154 members of parliament were elected without a single vote. In 2018, the election was held on the night before. The the administration, both the civil and and military bureaucracy, helped balloting the stuffs the night before, and the weeks before leading to the election. So, therefore, it is the third time in 2024, yesterday, that we couldn't vote either. 120 million voters have been deprived of three consecutive elections of a right, very basic civic and political right this time around. And your report had clearly indicated the today's report by the United Nations HRC. So... It is not leading to a totalitarian state. We are in one. Even one of the paid um, election observer by the regime, a British uh, gentleman called Jess Colson yesterday uh, had confirmed upon his visit to the different polling stations that it was a North Korean model election and the voters turn out did not cross or exceed more than eight or 10 percent. So this is the situation we are in, even from the Amar Bangladesh Party, AB Party election monitoring cell. We had received field reports, pictures, photographies and the videos from across the countries, at least a few thousand polling stations uh, from different districts. And nowhere voter turnout was more than five to six or seven percent. So from our own field investigation confirms that the voters' turnout was around 5 to 7 percent, although the election commission announced yesterday it was around 41 percent, which, of course, the queuing up or the lines we have seen across the country did not match up. So it is sad that we have been deprived of an election. Democratic backsliding has been going on for a few years. Our friends and development partners in the West, in America, Europe, have been repeatedly urging the regime to get back to the democratic path, get on to the rule of law and human rights, which sadly the regime did not uh, give any heed to. So it, it, is, it is a totalitarian state, a North Korean model now. Yeah, it's quite rare that the United Nations should speak the way Volker Turk, the human rights chief, has spoken about Bangladesh. Let me just read the quote. I implore the government to take the necessary steps to ensure that the human rights of all Bangladeshis are fully taken into account and to strengthen the underpinnings of a truly inclusive democracy. And he talks about opposition supporters being detained arbitrarily, subjected to intimidation. He talks about mass arrests, enforced disappearances, blackmailing and surveillance, all methods he believes have been used by law enforcement officials in the months leading up to the vote. But does that mean that the security apparatus is in league with the ruling party and the prime minister, because surely one can't happen without the other, certainly not for this many years. Yes, absolutely. And we have first-hand experiences uh, how the law enforcement agencies, uh, different apparatus have been actively working and helping with this government for the last few years and so. So it, the regime simply cannot survive on a so low, unpopular position or so such a low turnout that had been proved yesterday without the aid of the civil and military bureaucracy. So the UNHRC correctly pointed out that more than around 80,000 plus uh, political prisoners at the moment in different detention centers, it is beyond the capacity of the country's the prison system. And the, the funny thing was out of the 47,000 voters, that the postal ballot had been given to the prisoners, only 10 had casted their ballots. So you can imagine the level of protest, even when they are in detention. So mass arrest, more than 10 million political activists currently are in hiding. Five million of them are under different false cases. 132,000 false cases have been filed by the police and other agencies. And enforced disappearance, persistent intimidation, fear, surveillance that we are in, those who are still trying to protest and hold the regime accountable, raise our voice to speak for the people. We are under persistent surveillance and intimidation. It is so 
it's frustrating that after 52 years, the same party had for the second time established a one-party state where mm-hmm. no other political opposition took part. Mm-hmm. Even I could see your own report that 64 opposition candidates have been uh, elected. Sad enough for your uh, viewers around the world, these 64 are also from the ruling party. Yeah, that's right. They They're had, going to be giving their loyalty to that, Sheikh Hasina. Yeah. yeah, they had staged this election, official ruling party candidates, unofficial ruling party candidates, independent ruling party candidates, dummy ruling party candidates, fake ruling party candidates. Where you will look at, out of the 300, all of them are from the ruling party under the different marks, different made-up Queen's parties and different symbols. Mm. But they're all nominated by Sheikh Hasina, Her Majesty the Queen of Bengal at the moment. Mm-hmm. We, where, and you're going to see in few days' time her coronation for 2024 enthronement. So the sad enough is by the coronation, we're going to be uh, losing our democracy, our right to vote. The struggle we had, the blood we have shed for the last 52 years, our citizens that fought for it, and we are going to lose it again once more. Despite all the urge from the international community, from United Nations to the United States, from European Union to other, other friends and colleagues and development partners, which she didn't give any ear to it. Okay, Asadha Zaman, we're going to have to leave it there. I'm so sorry, but I uh, really, really appreciate uh, seeing what's happening in your country from your point of view as a member of the opposition. After this now, what will be the fifth term of Sheikh Hasina as your country's prime minister? Thank you so much. Grateful. Thank you. The U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin.